Hello guys, so I'm gonna change the Mini Cooper S F55 orange screen for a touch screen display with Apple CarPlay and all that good stuff. I'm making the video because I haven't seen a lot of videos in the internet explaining how to do this. My dash cam is turning on and off. And the other thing is, I will show in the video if you still retain the original car's service checks, the oil check and all that stuff. So to check your oil, the service requirements. Because unfortunately in this minis, in the F series minis, you cannot check the oil unless you do it with the radio. So supposedly this screen, touch screen, Apple CarPlay radio can do that. So I'm going to get on with it. I'm going to try to get this off, put that one in, and I'm going to tell you guys at the end how it goes. There we go. There we go. out okay I don't have anything else to put there that's good now this should come right off Just in case, I'm going to stop. Oh, there it comes. Right off. Perfect. Now I'm going to take the two screws. That's here and here. So I've plugged in all the wires. I'll show you in a quick time lapse there's another video on youtube showing you where to plug them i just followed the same instructions as that video and we're gonna take this one out plug that one in and pray that it works so there's supposed to be a toggle right here somewhere but i cannot see okay so here's the hole there it is. Seems like I got it. A few moments later. There we go. And I didn't break anything, thank goodness. Okay. So now we have to detach every cable like I said these things are a lot harder than they seem so I've managed to disconnect everything I've broken some of these clips and I hope they're not necessary because in the video that I'm watching they don't connect any of those I hope so I haven't gotten there yet but I really hope that they're not that important because I broke them this pieces just couldn't come off i couldn't take them off without breaking them now what you have to do is you have to put the gps up here and then route the cable through here and now i'm going to connect it to the screen next you have to feed the two red sticks on the right and left vents so i attached everything as shown and I'm going to try it for the first time. So I'm going to turn it on and see if I actually achieved something. I couldn't attach a blue cable that the guy was explaining in the video. I couldn't find anything to connect it to. Maybe I broke something. And this is the moment of truth. I hope this works. Sorry for the camera angle, guys. But I'm going to turn it on. Please only use this when it's safe to do so. 
Okay, so it is working guys, but we have to check everything first. I want to check, like I said, if the oil thingy is, wor is working. Okay, so the cable that I couldn't connect was the radio cable and everything seems to work fine. I'm going to put the phone down, I'm going to put it on the stand and I'm going to put this back into place before I try everything. It is working so I feel happy but I'm going to put everything in this place. So it's much trickier than it seems to put it back on. At least for me, I'm having kind of trouble putting it back on. But I'll get there. I'm going to keep trying and I'll be with you guys in a sec. So uh, this is the second day that I'm here. Don't make the same mistake that I did, which is I didn't connect the microphone. And when making phone calls through Apple CarPlay, I cannot hear anything. So I'm going to have to take everything off today and install the microphone, which is unfortunate. And I'm going to try to connect the cable of the radio, which was the cable that I didn't connect yesterday, just to have it connected, if I can do it. Now, I should tell you that this screen, I'm going to tell you all the drawbacks. One of them is that down here, the two screws that you take out, one here and one here, you don't get to put them back. So those don't go back. When you put this screen back... It's only held in place by the three pins at the top. Here at the bottom, it's not held back by anything. It doesn't move or anything like it, but just to tell you that it doesn't use those two screws at the bottom. And I'm going to show you all the features that you retained from the original radio. So I'm going to take this out. I'm going to install the microphone. I don't know where I'm going to install it yet. I'm thinking maybe somewhere around here. It because I don't want to route it all the way through the glove box up here and then up here to, to you know, tuck the cables in there and put it there. I don't want to do all that stuff because it's, it's quite a lot of work. So if it works here and if it sounds good, I'm going to leave it there. So I'm going to take the screen out. I'm going to connect the microphone. I'm going to try to connect the radio FM antenna. Um, I, I, can, I did connect the FM radio, by the way. So I was able to connect it. Um, as you can see there, it says the station. So it's, I connected the microphone and I put it somewhere here. So it's the third day that I'm taking the new head unit out. And the reason is I got a backup camera. Now, how this backup camera works should be pretty simple and straightforward. So you have the camera itself, and then you have two outputs for the camera. You have the video output that's meant to connect to the head unit, and then you have the power output. And you have two options when connecting the power output. You can connect it to the backup light, the white light that's, that every time you put it into reverse lights up at the back, or the video output cable of the camera has on both ends a red 12 volt cable and then you just connect one end here so you would connect this end to the output and then the red one here and then the other end which is the one that connects on the head unit this one connects to the head unit you have to find somewhere in the head unit to connect it to this one so that's what I'm going to do right now. I hope everything works fine. I will be with you in a second when everything is connected. Okay, so I managed to connect it. And I had to fiddle with it for a long while. The reason is, not because I was plugging it wrong. My first instinct was to plug it to the yellow one that doesn't have it. The yellow one, that it doesn't actually have any labels on it. And the power cable, the red power cable, I plugged it to the 12 volt. And it wasn't showing here. The reason is because you have to go into the settings of the head unit and choose the right settings under the camera section. Now, I already have a backup camera. And I'm going to try to use the backup camera that I have. The hole, I'm just going to try to make it bigger to route 
the power cables for the new camera because they are bigger so i'm just going to try to make that hole bigger to not drill again so i'm going to route everything which is going to be a pain in the ass so i'm going to do all of that and i'll be with you in a second so i've connected the backup camera it turned out to be a bit more difficult than i was expecting but in the end i was able to do it like i showed you the connections that's how i connected it if i go into reverse it shows up straight away and i have the parking sensors and this is a feature that's really cool let me go forward a little bit so it's that beep is not annoying you guys so when i put it into reverse straight away the backup camera comes on and you see i have the parking sensors and the screen knows that i have the parking sensors and this car appears here and as i'm i'm going to put it in reverse again as i'm backing up when i'm close to some you see they will start showing like that so that's how close i am and when i get close enough it will stop beeping there it is so it's really nice to have that feature with this camera so like you can see every time i put it in reverse i'm gonna do it one more time every time i put it in reverse the backup camera turns on this is how it looks and the only thing left for me to do is to seal the hole with some black silicone i kept the other camera that i had as a dash cam there and i'm going to show you how i wired everything in a second but now i'm gonna seal the hole for the cable with black silicone so, so moisture and rain doesn't go inside so to wire the cables i know this is not good this is not perfect this is not how it's meant to be done you're meant to put it in through here but it was a hassle to do it so this is the backup camera and it goes in through here and it comes out through here goes all the way through here you take this panel out you take this bit out you drill and the silicone's there it's not perfect i might wait until it dries and i might put some more silicone there but this is how it looks in the end this is how it looks To wire the cables both of them i did it all the way up there through the ceiling let me show you if you can see there you can see some of the cables right there and there and here you can see a bit more of it so i routed it all the way up here and all the way down that door all the way down here down here you can actually see them here and then i there's three screws on the glove box one here one here and one here i took them off i tilted it slightly and i routed it all the way back there up to the display so now the camera that you see there the one right in the middle that's working as a dash cam which is up here let me this is the camera that's facing forward and that's the camera at the back and it's recording on the loop so it's recording continuously and then here in the car i have the backup camera so the dash cam is here there in the middle of the car inside of the car the dash cam is inside of the car and then the backup camera like i said i routed it all the way up here up here down through the door i slightly tilted the glass box out and i routed all the cable in through there and here connected to the head unit so every time i put it in reverse 
it shows up like that. I might have to move it down a bit, even more downwards. But anyway, I'll do that when the silicone dries. So everything's done. As you can see, the quality of the camera is all right. Nothing too fancy, but it works. Now, regarding the car functions, which is what you all want to see, like I said, it does tell you the tire pressure monitor, as you can see right here. It does tell you, um, let me get out of the way. So it does tell you the tire pressure of the tires and on the website where i bought the screen it said that you lost that you lose that that it w doesn't tell you the tire pressure but it does so that's a great thing now the most important thing is the oil to check the oil this car doesn't have dipstick and you have to do it with the oem radio and i read in the internet in many forums that it doesn't work when you install an aftermarket screen but that's not true Okay, so it's measuring it. So there it is. It says oil is normal at 83%. It's actually more de descriptive than the OEM radio because in the original radio, it just tells you like max minimum and if it has a lot. This one tells you the actual percentage, which this is really the most important thing is if it can tell you the oil level of the car. Now you get more information the engine oil the vehicle inspection the brake fluid so you do get a lot of information the check control okay no abnormalities so you do get a lot of information with it uh, now i should say that another bad thing that is happening is i've called a few people and they've all told me the same thing which is they can hear themselves back when they speak they can hear me perfectly fine but when they speak they can hear themselves um, like it's got double audio when they speak they can hear themselves they say it's pretty annoying I have found no way of fixing that if somebody knows how to fix that please let me know because here in the volume section there's no information about any microphone or you can't change any microphone settings what I really, really like, like really dislike is the bloody LED right, LED um, light. Why can't they make it so you can choose the color, so you can, you know, put it as an ambient light. If they can, you know, let you move it when you change the air conditioning, if they can let you move it um, when you rev the car up, it, it makes no sense that they don't let you choose the color that you want. Yeah, that, that just makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, the thing that I dislike, the parking sensors as well, the beeping coming out of the actual screen itself, not out of the speakers of the car. I don't like that. Um, that people can hear themselves in a phone call. I don't like that either. Although it doesn't bother me because I don't hear anything wrong with it when I'm speaking with someone. Everything's perfectly fine, but they can hear themselves. Um, so it's annoying to them, not to me. And yeah, everything else works perfectly fine. Um, you have many things that you can do. You have YouTube, you have Netflix, which obviously I know you're not gonna do that while you're driving. What I will be using mostly is um, Apple CarPlay. I like it. Um, another thing is when you open and close the doors, this thing I haven't told you, but when you open and close the doors, it actually, I have the right door open right now and it says left front door open. And if you can see here in the dash, it's actually the right like door that it's open. Cause I live in the UK, I have a right hand drive car, but for some reason, um, when I open and close the door, it says left front door unclosed which I don't know how to change that either. Um, the boot and hood should work as well. I haven't tried it because I have to get out of the car, open it, but I'm pretty sure it works as well. I do get that information here as well, but... And yeah, you have um, many applications. You have radio, YouTube, Netflix. You can, you can put your own 
TVs and like you can put your own videos and your own music in here but I don't have any Bluetooth connected to, to do that any um, USB hanging somewhere to do that I will just use the phone you can do a hotspot from the phone to the screen and then you can use YouTube and Netflix um, I know that's a gimmick but hey it's, it's nice to have in the auto setup like I said when you go to the to the LED ring brightness you can choose a million things, but you cannot choose continual light, ambient light. It makes no sense. It just that that's a real that's a big bummer that that they don't let you do that. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you've gotten value out of this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you in the next one.